As I said, we have two people giving a testimony. So for the second person, can our Vice President Matthias Cho come up to share his testimony? Hello everyone. I don't know if my heart's still pounding from dancing or the stage fright. But um, thank you guys for coming today and today I just wanted to share um, a testimony and like a personal, I'm a personal witness of God working in my life. So my name is Matthias Yu News Cho. That is my full legal name. My middle name is Yu News. And I'll talk about that later, but I wanted to share with you all my testimony. So as we just heard, a testimony is a statement of someone's personal experience with God and how one became Christian. And I used to think that sharing your testimony was a one-time thing, but now I know that everyone's testimony is constantly being written each and every day because this God doesn't work just once, but he's constantly shaping you. So today I wanted to share with everyone um, a specific time in life where I have missed God and my experience with the way God has worked in my life. Just for some context, I've had the privilege of to be born in a Christian family. And my father is a pastor, and I am the youngest of five kids, so I'm the baby. I grew up always going to church, I always attended Sunday school, I grew up learning about Jesus and the Old and New Testaments. And going to church for me was like a family activity, but I look back and see what a great privilege it was to be exposed to Jesus at such a young age. And today I wanted to talk about uh, and expose some of you who may have never heard of Jesus Christ. So being the youngest of my family, I always picked up a lot after my siblings. Um, in elementary school, I was really, I really liked art and painting, like my sister. And in high school, I got into music and learned guitar and violin, like my brother. And one thing that all my siblings shared was that you're all fencers. And shout out to my fencing homies in the back, thank you guys for coming out. Um, so yeah, we were all fencers. And I started going to a fencing club in Manhattan when I was 11 years old. And my parents forced me into the sport, and I first very dreaded every single Saturday that we would go, because we would wake up at like 8, 7 in the morning, and we'd drive over an hour to Manhattan just for me to get destroyed by the big kids. But eventually when I joined the high school team, I was able to actually share my knowledge with my team. While I was getting destroyed at my fencing club, I, was, I would cook the kids in my high school. So I became captain of my, uh, my, I became captain of the fencing team my junior year, and it was my experience that was very valuable because no one else in my school did fencing outside of school. And all I wanted to do was to improve my team and show them how we could get more wins and just improve. <clears throat> so in my team, I saw a lot of potential in one of the underclassmen, and his name was John Sabu. And he always listened to drills, tried his hardest during practice, and it really showed, and it really showed that we shared the same love for the sport of fencing. And as teammates, we supported each other at every single match. And he would, he would cheer me on at one of like my greatest high school memories when I got second out of tournament. He was kind and innocent, and I honestly could see him taking my place as captain of the team when he was a senior. So John even would even start getting fencing lessons in the off season to improve for the next season. So there was a lot uh, to look forward to in my senior year of high school. So in the first week of my senior year, you know, I'm from a small town on Long Island, and news spreads really fast. I was in class one morning on Friday this year, like a helicopter fly, fly by my school, and of course this doesn't really happen that often. I soon hear an hour later that someone was struck by a train at our local train station, and all trains were stopped. I continue to go about my day, thinking that it was very strange, and by the end of the school day, I get notifications from my friends on Instagram stories saying that my friend John Sabu was missing and never reported home. I soon came to realize that these two incidents were connected in John Sabu's own life. So, dealing with loss was new to me, and to lose someone that was younger than me was so difficult to understand. And I could really just, I was so confused, and all I had was questions. How could this happen? Like, he would never, like, God, why did you let this happen? And why are you putting me through this? So the day after the incident, I visited his parents and brother, who I'd never met before. And I introduced myself to hear, actually, that they knew who I was. And they knew who I was very involved with the defensive team, and they knew I was captain. And John's brother would reveal, reveal to me that John spoke very highly about me at his home. And John's best friend would say a similar thing that I was one of John's greatest role models. So 
So I just tried my best to be the best captain that I could for the team. Really just trying to improve, just encourage them, and just share my love with sport of fencing. But hearing these nice things from someone that you lost was really heartbreaking, and I actually felt a lot of guilt. In my head, I said, how could all of this happen? You were his leader and his friend. You could have done something, you were not enough. So I was really frustrated with myself for not being present, and I can't even tell John that, you know, thank you for all these kind things that you said, and that really hurts to this day. So I couldn't help but keep thinking, why God? Seeing John's family just questioning and crying hurt me so much, and I needed answers. As the need for answers grew, the worse my mental state got. And I needed to distract myself and get away from everything. So I went back to my room, and I chose to play guitar as it was my way of coping. Um, I didn't know what to play, and so I played some old music sheets that I found in my room, and they were my brother's songs that he left, and they were all Christian songs. And they were all like basic chord sheets of songs that I've heard before, and I started playing it. It actually gave, I actually gave the words to the songs to me. The song that I found was Blessed Be Your Name. And in this, in this song, you hear the lyrics, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, or still I will say, Lord, blessed be your name. And in the bridge of that song, it says, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Singing this song to the top of my lungs, I realized what I was doing and what I was singing. I don't even know why I was crying when I was uh, singing that song, but I found myself choosing to worship God in the midst of my suffering, proclaiming these lyrics, and I still chose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. And at this very moment, I was able to understand and find peace in everything that was going on. Justin actually mentioned a part of this verse, but I'm going to quote Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, and it reads, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'm not, able to I'm not able to understand everything in my life. And as much as I really wanted the answers, honestly, look, now I don't even want to know like, the real answer for all that. Because God is all-powerful and entirely good in every season of my life, and I will choose to praise, because He works all things for our good. And we might not see it at first, but He is. I learned it was a, truly a blessing to be in John's life and affect him in the ways that I did. And I never realized how big of an impact I can have with someone. I was one of John's role models, and to be valued in someone's life and making a difference in them was so meaningful to me. I'm so happy I was a part of John's life, and I hope that I can affect others as well. Because I choose to build my life on the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the greatest role model that I have, and it's through him that is able to reach those. Jesus is someone who impacted my life and continues to be my inspiration every day. And I'm going to quote another Bible verse from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, which is kind of my mission and how I go about every day. And it reads, Make every effort to live in peace, but everyone and to be holy without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And as I mentioned before, my full name is Matthias Yunus Cho. My given middle name is Yunus. And my father purposely gave me an English middle name about the news. And what news is it? It's the good news of the gospel. The gospel is literally in my name, and that's what I will do. I wanted to show that the good news of the gospel was that there is hope, there is peace, and there is love through him, despite everything that goes on with my life. After this happened my beginning of my senior year, of course my senior year was cut short to COVID. I started off freshman year just probably depressed in my room because it was every, all school was online. But I looked back and it was a lot of growing and pain, but I eventually lead me to Bing where I can be here to give this testimony, to spend three years in this college fellowship, and I grew so much in my faith. And I just wanted to, yes, encourage you that there is peace and love through him. Jesus Christ, I want you guys to just know that I follow him, and I want you guys to follow him, for he is good, he is above all things, and his love endures forever. Thank you.